This is it. <laughs> That's right. So hopefully it feels like, you know, a normal vehicle to you. It doesn't Dice. feel, but uh, we have 700 watts of solar between the hood, the dash, the roof, and the tail, which can provide some real power for recharging the vehicle. Some of the unique things are, you know, a big center screen that has most of the functionality of the vehicle on it and side cameras instead of side mirrors. So we have better aerodynamics. Mirrors are old technology. They're old technology. We may still have to have some reflective material out there on our little camera pod uh -huh. because the motorcycle regulations require you to in the okay. States. But we think that they're very close to approving digital cameras. It's just taking the government a long time as it does. And then you just put it in drive? Uh, then you just put it in drive. Uh, this is the Prindle, so uh, park, reverse, neutral drive, uh, windshield wipers over here, and everything you can control on the center screen with these buttons. It sounds a little like a spacecraft taking off. This <laughs> is uh, This is an alpha vehicle, so there's lots of squeaks and rattles and bumps and stuff. But it's, pretty, it's smooth though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It should hopefully feel like uh, you know any kind of small car would feel, but it. Uh, Whoa! It, <laughs> <laughs> it, it will go when you want it to go, and this is just the front-wheel drive version, so it's slower yeah. than the other versions. But this one's zero to sixty in under six seconds, wow. which is pretty peppy, yeah. you know, to today's standards. about solar cars for so long but now we're driving it when i mean it's not just a concept car yeah well, this is kind of the first entry vehicle uh -huh. to show this is the most efficient platform that's solar powered and get you most of your driving needs yeah. done the idea behind aptera is just brutal efficiency and how to design a vehicle to be the most efficient from point a to point b as possible <laughs> thousand miles 1600 kilometers going one direction powered by the sun on a daily basis but if you want to go see grandma on a really really far road trip then you can do it it starts with a mathematical equation which means first aerodynamics because what you don't realize is that in a typical sedan you use more than 60 percent of your fuel just pushing air out of the way so if you could take that down to zero you'd instantly get 60 percent better fuel economy then if you couple it with an electric powertrain that gets much more power to the wheels versus an internal combustion engine Sadly, internal combustion engines only get 25 to 27 percent of the energy out of the fuel into the wheels to actually propel you. So EV drivetrains are just much better at that. And then if you make it lightweight, you decrease rolling resistance and other things, you end up with a math equation that is very, very efficient. And when you're very efficient, you can do things like put solar panels on your vehicle to charge your vehicle for a reasonable amount of range. This is just our design and production studio. So we're working on the design issues and the things that will have to happen to get us into production. The interesting thing about the Abtera is we don't have a central motor with a transaxle that has drive shafts that come out to the wheels. We have the motors in the wheels. So that green ring inside there is actually the electric motor that is part of the wheel. So one, we're able to move the mass of the motor out to the wheel. And two, we get much better efficiency that way and we get better regenerative braking and it's a lot simpler. Every time you have a gear in a system, you have a loss. In a typical drivetrain like my Tesla, you could lose 15% of your power out of the motor just going through all the gears to get to the wheel. So if you just put the power in the wheel, you end up being much more overall efficient. And what are you using for solar? What's the... These are very similar to cells you see on the top of your house. Uh, they're monocrystalline cells. These are built a little differently. It's a powder crystalline cell instead of like a flake crystalline cell, which uh, allows it to curve on our compound curving surfaces. And it allows it to have much greater resistance to impacts and cracking and that sort of stuff. The solar cells we use, you see how it looks kind of velvety on the top there. 
They're not flake crystalline cells like you might have seen on rooftop solar, but they're also held together in a very unique way such that we can get great flexibility out of the cells. So that flexibility allows us to put the cell on a compound curve like we have on these vehicles. But it also allows us that if you break a cell, it doesn't shatter like a regular crystalline cell would. You can use this cell even though it's cracked and you get almost all of the original energy out of the cell. So when this is held in a matrix like we hold them, if you got a hail strike or you got some other sort of damage to the cell, it's gonna produce nearly identical the power over its lifetime and you don't have to worry about replacing the cell. So the solar is so unique that it's not something you can buy off the shelf. So kind of owners of that. Really, you and can't it, buy this off the shelf. But you can buy flat panels off the shelf, but you can't buy compound curved panels that operate in the voltage range, which gets the power back into our pack with very little losses. It would be great if a lot of automotive had solar capability, but no one has solar capability yet, so it's kind of all us. No one has any? No one has but Other companies have dabbled in solar. Mercedes had a small band on the top of their roof to run a fan to kind of keep the vehicle at ambient. I think Subaru did for a while, but they were solar panels that were like 10 to 50 watts. This is a 700 watt system. Nobody's ever really done anything like that. A few years ago, Toyota did a kind of test panel for a Prius, but they did them with very sophisticated solar cells. And you know, by our estimates, it probably cost $170,000 for the solar package they put onto the Prius. And they got like 10 or 12 miles a day of solar charging range. And that's because the Prius is compared to us so inefficient. You know, we burn 100 watt hours per mile. A Prius is burning more like 350 watt hours per mile. So if you have three and a half times the energy usage per mile, you need three and a half times the solar capability, which there's only so much roof space you can put on a car. <laughs> What's happening at the back of the car? Because it's not a conventional design. Yeah, we went with a three wheel design, one to reduce weight. If you see kind of front wheel drive vehicles and racing, anytime they take an aggressive corner, you see them lift the innermost rear wheel. So in aggressive handling situations, you're only using three wheels. So we said, well, why have the weight and complexity of the fourth wheel when you could just have three wheels? It also decreases the frontal area, so better aerodynamics. And we find that the performance characteristics of the vehicle don't suffer much by going with a three-wheeled architecture versus a four-wheeled architecture. Stability and the safety, all these. Yeah, you have to move the weight forward. So we're front biased on our weight, 65% forward, 35% rearward. But if you have a vehicle platform where you have that capability to shift the weight around, then it really is no penalty to go with a three-wheeled architecture versus a four-wheeled architecture. How long have you been with Aptera? I've been with Aptera for four months now. Are you from a car company? Or? I was at a startup that did like efficient internal combustion engine research. Okay. And then before that I was in college doing student racing. I did that with actually a, quite a few of the people who now work here at Aptera. And how does this compare to even what you were racing? This is similar to a race car in terms of weight and actually it handles just like a, a car does. So you, would, you, you wouldn't expect a, oh, you took off a wheel, that's gonna be unstable. It's like, yeah. no, I mean, it's just as stable as any of the race cars. Yeah, this will be where I, yeah. You can just kinda like, I mean, you wouldn't normally do this at this sort wow. of speed. And uh, yeah, you wouldn't think you would wanna do that in a three-wheeled car. But yeah. uh, you can do it without too much of a problem. You hit bumps, yeah. and the car's not like getting upset. Oh. The, the suspension in this car is definitely rough, so we have some refinements oh. coming in with wow. that. And but it's it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It has so much pickup. 
and with really efficient lightweight car there's no reason you have to choose between being efficient and having a fun vehicle because yeah. lightweight does both Our core technologies are really in the aerodynamics of the vehicle, light weighting the vehicle, composite structures. These are some of the composite materials that we use. It's uh, sandwich core construction. This composite material is seven times stronger than steel by weight. It also goes over our kind of compound curve. So the core, because it's broken into these kind of hex cells, can go around corners and around radiuses and around our big curves, unlike old foam core structures that maybe you've seen in textbooks where the panels of foam are really flat. This gives us a lot of flexibility to make our very organic shape and still have a very strong vehicle. Our vehicles in last testing had the highest roof crush strength of any passenger car on the road. So you would think, oh, this is a very lightweight vehicle. It's not going to be strong. It's exactly the opposite. We've designed the vehicle to be as strong as possible. Because you have experience in working with composites. Yeah, my boat company, we built tens of thousands of boats and we built them all with a very similar resin infusion process. And the resin infusion stuff was pioneered by the America's Cup yacht racers. The problem was they took six months to make a boat. I wanted to make a boat company where we could make, you know, 20 boats a day. So I was figuring out how to commoditize this process and make it something that you could manufacture many, many a day of. So when I met Steve, I was actually working on the very beginnings of this process. And he said, I have an idea for a very aerodynamic, lightweight vehicle. And I said, oh, you should build it like a monocoque Formula One car or Sears aircraft. And he said, oh, that's a great idea. So we kind of held hands and started Aptera from there. These are actually 3D printed hinges. This is the upper door hinge. And we do a design process called generative design, where we give the computer a problem a constraint that says the door hinges here, it weighs so much, it has to pivot here. And then we tell the computer, take away any weight you can to make this the lightest weight part possible. So what you end up with is a part that's 30% the weight, but still just as strong as a regular full part. This is the rear hatch hinge, and you can see there's a big pocket that was taken out. The computer said the strongest way to make this is to hollow that out that's how we also ended up with a lot of our suspension parts. And all these parts have been drastically reduced in terms of weight because we went through that process of having the computer solve for the lightest part possible. I've got a pretty deep history in battery technologies. I developed a sulfur carbon battery a number of years ago. I started a lithium battery company. These battery cells are the kind of battery cells we've chosen to use for the Aptera. They're called 2170 cells. They become very ubiquitous. It's what's in the Tesla Model 3 now but we have a pretty unique way of how we bond them together, manage them thermally, and also manage them for voltage and impedance over time. We record every charge and discharge cycle that every cell in the system goes through, and that keeps the battery pack healthy over time, so you know that your pack can last for you know, 200,000 miles and get feedback. You know, a thing that we're going to do that a lot of other EV companies don't do is give you a lot of information on how you produce power through your solar system and how you use power through your drivetrain. We have a center infotainment display that will give you a lot of information about how the vehicle is using energy and how the vehicle is creating energy. We try to show the driver how if they change their actions, they could actually make that green circle get bigger. So if you wanted to turn off your heated seats, you could gain 15 miles. If you wanted to turn off your fans, you could gain 10 miles. If you wanted to go to 100% regenerative braking, you could gain 20 miles. So you can take actions to use your energy differently so you can get to your destination. The rear actually has a good amount of storage, which you may not expect from how our teardrop shape looks. We also have a tent that goes over the rear here. Now this goes over this way. I remember in college, I used to take my Honda CRX across country and I would sleep in the back in a very similar situation. So when we started to open up the rear storage here, it was very apparent like, gosh, this is really usable space. How do we maximize that? Look at us, imagine looking at the stars <laughs> with plenty of room. 
You do it's have a lot of room. Spacious. How tall are you? Yeah, I'm 5'7". Okay, that's good. So, yeah. And I've had my, my golden doodle. He also fits in here very nicely. So you also have a camper van. <laughs> yeah. If you're solar charging, there's just no other vehicle that can, on a daily basis, create its own fuel. It was very apparent, like, what would you do with that? Well, gosh, go exploring, go to the national parks, go adventuring. So if you're gonna make it an adventure vehicle, you gotta add as much functionality as possible. So you can imagine going out to your favorite camping spot, solar charging for three or four days while you're at that camping spot, and then being able to come home with more power in your Aptera than what you left with. So you are just saying, this is not a golf car, you can go to Yosemite and camp and back and... Uh, well, it's, it's actually classified as a motorcycle or auto cycle, but being classified as a motorcycle gets you cheaper insurance and the registration's cheaper. And in almost all places, if you have three wheels, you don't have to have a motorcycle's license. And because you have something over your head, you don't need to wear a helmet. So it really is kind of a very interesting situation for how the vehicle's classified. You know what, we have plenty of space here. I just don't feel we are on a motorcycle. The feeling I'm having is more like we are inside of a, like a nice sports car. Yeah, you know, our aim is to make the cabin feel like any typical small passenger car that you get in, so. Hmm. It doesn't feel much different with three wheels than a typical passenger car, but we save the weight, we get an aerodynamic gain, um, and we still think it's pretty darn fun to drive, so. It is. Nice. I see you, you even took advantage of the interior to keep going with the solar panels, actually. Is this over... Yeah, th this solar dash by itself produces about 80 watts of power. Really, the heat from your dash is the number one contributor of the heat energy that enters the vehicle. It's funny because we actually have products to sort of try to just get that out, right? The yeah, but we figured if that's the number one heat gain, then we might as well get some use out of it and put some solar cells there. And if we can use that 80 watts of power. So what's in other cars a disadvantage? You sort of try to turn it in an advantage. Uh, yeah, a, a lot about this vehicle is that way and finding things that in traditional automotive or energy wasters and try to turn them into energy gain for us. This vehicle has regenerative braking, so every time you brake, it turns that braking energy into power that comes back into your battery pack. So, I see cameras, I don't see uh, mirrors. Yeah, there's no mirrors on this vehicle. There's just little camera pods out there. Side view mirrors on a typical passenger car, if we just put those on the Aptera, would use about 20% of the total energy of the whole vehicle. This whole vehicle is as efficient as the side view mirrors on an F-150 pickup truck. This is just a very, very efficient platform. It's about the same as taking a one foot square cube and pushing it down the freeway at highway speeds. Uh, this is an alpha vehicle, so there's more bumps and squeaks and rattles and stuff than a typical vehicle would have, but, you know, it's quiet, but has a bit of a hum to it, yeah. but hopefully doesn't feel much different in driving than, you know, a typical vehicle would feel. Oh boy, oh boy, that's, but it's, uh, that's quick. It, it goes when you want it to go, and that's quick, you know, yeah. is reasonably flat in aggressive handling situations, and yeah. we can peel the tires up here if you want. Why not? <laughs> we have had lots of conversations with investors over the last year, and a lot of them have questions like, what is the market for this crazy efficient spaceship solar powered thing you're making? And a year ago, we didn't have an answer to that question. We just thought, we want to build the most efficient vehicle possible. We think that people will like that for a number of reasons, but, that's all speculation. Wow. You don't get a lot of acceleration out of peeling the tires, but it's still fun to show your friends. Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> now we have over 11,000 orders. So I think the market coming to us proves 
that, hey, people do want efficiency. They want something with a good amount of utility, but something that can be charged free from the sun every day. They don't have to think about plugging it in every day. And, you know, from my perspective, it also looks very cool. I just push and it should open up like a regular door. There you have it. If you want to hear the sound of inefficiency, <laughs> look at that. Anything that you hear is loud or hot is inefficient. <laughs> so when you hear like a loud motorcycle or a loud car going by, it's just inefficient. Uh, that energy that is going to create the sound means it's not going to push your vehicle. So I think the Aptera is just an amazing machine because when you drive it, you don't 